YouTube, welcome to the Beast Paths. Uh, or, wait a minute. No, no, it's just multiplayer crossroads, not the Beast Path. But welcome to another replay here. This one from our own Sovereign who submitted this one. And uh, he is playing as the Beastman, and he says that he really likes this army and that he's had great luck with it in um, online uh, quick battle. And I wanted to show it to you all, let you see what you think. If you are a Beastman player yourself or have some Beastman armies you fancy, let me know what you think of it. And I figured I'd give you all a chance to see his army in action and uh, get to enjoy a battle. And then, like I said, we could all uh, give our own thoughts on it. Not that I'm some kind of expert, but like I said, I figure by the time we all get involved, it could be fun. So let's check out his army. What is he using that he has been enjoying? He's got a Beast Lord here, and then uh, he's got a Bray Shaman, Lord of Shadows. I like the Shadow Pick. The uh, Penumbral Pendulum is here, and he's also got Pit of Shades. And I believe the other one is Withering, um, or Feebling Foe, sorry. Yeah, Pendulum and Feebling Foe. Good picks, good picks indeed. And then on the flanks, I like the support crew here. There's gonna be some uh, Warhounds with Poison being supported by a Cynagore with Great Weapon. Both these units are pretty squishy by themselves in terms of if they get charged by, especially if something's dedicated to anti-large, it gets rough. Um, though look at this though, the Hounds are not actually considered a large entity, just FYI. Uh, <laughs> but in any case, the Cynagores with Great Weapons cause massive damage on the charge. They have huge melee attack. Uh, or sorry, not huge melee attack, my bad. I was, I was seeing the attack pop up from the Beast Lord all of a sudden. I got, got confused there. They have very solid weapon damage, they have very high speed, and they get a very good charge bonus, which then helps translate into higher attack off the charge. So their stats don't necessarily look all that uh, frightening, but don't be confused. These guys can damage big time on the charge. Look at this. We got the Eye of Morslib here as one of the units, and it is already really badly hurt the Companions of Kinel. This is a very expensive questing knight. It does anti-large damage on top of the armor piercing. There's a standard Saigor also supporting a well-spread Ungor spear herd line up front. And uh, you can see Bretonia here is rocking a uh, King Lewin here on Beaky. And he has gotten a piece of the Bray Shaman Lore of Shadows. So this is definitely a mistake on the part of the Bray Shaman to get this far out. But at the same time, they made that mistake. Bretonia has made a big mistake with the Companion of Kinel, taking a massive hit, uh, several hits here from the Eye of Morslib. And then the defenders of the Fleur de Lis are starting to take some hits here as well. I want you all to see this charge here. Watch the Knights of the Realm. They almost disintegrate half of the Warhound, but watch how quickly they start to disintegrate um, under the attack of the Cynagore with Great Weapon. The charge got blocked. You can see the Cynagore with Great Weapon off the charge just shredding through an armored opponent. Uh, very, very effective. And you're going to see some Ungor Spear Herd being used to support. Also a good strategy, but again, Cynagore's with Great Weapons Really nice damage off the charge, but squishy. And you're going to see that here as they start to kind of get squished apart by this heavier, better armored Bretonian cavalry. And over here, we're going to see another charge, so let's watch that. Meanwhile, uh, Lewin is doing some attacking in the middle. Let's see this charge, too. It does happen kind of last second here, but Sovereign does manage to get an attack order clicked on the um, on the Companion of Kinel. They are followed up by a Knights of the Realm. This time, the charge wasn't directed at the Knights of the Realm, so obviously you can see they're really not taking any damage. We'll see what happens as that engagement begins in kind of a secondary, and we're also going to see some Ungor Raiders coming to support that. But the Knights of the Realm uh, did get a charge into the Warhound, not a great one into the Centigors, and you can see they do start to take some decent hit point damage. And remember, they're also being poisoned at the same time. Now, the Butchers of Kalkengard, there's also a couple of Ungor Raiders uh, back here supporting, and they did help drive out uh, King Lewin. Lewin has sent forward his peasants to die, and um, I guess that the idea here is that the beastmen will tire themselves out hacking apart peasants, <laughs> while the uh, peasant bowmen uh, with the fire arrows sit back and fire in, literally and figuratively there, I guess, because it's a fire arrow. Um, so uh, yeah, they're firing into that exchange, the uh, brace shaman. Uh, working around some of these peasants. You can see the peasant line just utterly disintegrates. It is going to be backed up by several uh, better units here, which is going to be some men-at-arms and a couple of foot squires. So you can see several units of them moving up now, and they are supported by a Grail Relique, um, which can hold together the leadership, but uh, Bretonia's peasant rush there uh, didn't do much to slow down or stop the Beastmen in any way, shape, or form. The Bray Shaman has pounded through into the archers. You can see the Beast Lord uh, pushing forward here as well. And then back here in this fight, um, you can see the Centicores with great weapons managed to hang on for a long time because, again, they didn't take that charge head-on. And so it certainly helps them, though they are starting to uh, waver now. But you can see they picked up almost a Chevron in that fight, so they must have done somewhat well there. 
I think trading with what they traded is a fair trade. And especially since the Warhounds with Poison came out alive from that whole engagement. They probably routed and then came back and are now alive. Um, so you're going to see here that Lewin ends up in a bad position uh, because he's having to try and deal with archers and other units. And the archers slowly doing uh, quite a bit of damage to him. Looks like he's stopped above them. He definitely needs to charge down there and try and route those archers because the butchers of Kalkengard and the hounds are too far away to support. So a mistake there from Bretonia and not getting to the ground quickly and ridding themselves of those Ungor raiders, which have been such a pesky nuisance. I do like the separation on the Saigor here. Uh, both of them are still firing in from a distance. They're getting some really nice hits and some solid damage done. We're not going to be able to see chevrons on the Eye of Morselib, but I mean, if you look at this one over here, and we know the Eye of Morselib has done even more damage. This one's already picked up a chevron along its way. The Eye of Morselib killed most of an elite cavalry regiment of renown. <laughs> yeah, so it didn't take long for them to probably start paying off. Uh, there is a field trebuchet back here for the Bretonians, but at this point, it will be uh, able to do very little, I think, to turn the tide of this fight, which is clearly in favor of the Beastmen. So I guess at this point, I'll give you my thoughts on the army as the uh, battle does start to wrap up some. I think it's kind of cool to see the two Saigors. Uh, they're certainly a threat at range, uh, probably to quite a few factions, especially if any faction is going to be bringing something like, in this case, like the Companion of Kinel, or maybe some kind of expensive infantry equivalent, or maybe a foot skirmish equivalent. You know, maybe some really expensive foot skirmishers or something like that. The Eye of Morslib, combined with the other Saigor, can do some tremendous damage. I like the pick of the lore shadows. Um, the Pit of Shades I sometimes bring, I sometimes don't. But uh, Pendulum is very good. And it can be used to kind of one-off delete certain units if you get a good shot on them with the Pendulum. It's good against armor. Um, it's a very effective spell uh, whenever you put it into the right position. And then a Bray Shaman on a Chariot is usually not a bad choice because they make great infantry, uh, anti-infantry support. That's what I meant to say there. Uh, Warhounds with Poison. Synagors are great weapons, again, like those picks. I would say that some of the weakness you could get into with this particular Beastman army is you really have um, a very limited infantry capability. You're relying on the Butchers of Kalkengard and the Bray Shaman and Beast Lord to help hold up a very, very cheap line of Ungor spear herds. You also do have some support from the Ungor Raiders, which I think is kind of important because if you didn't, and you had, like, so for this instance, Lewin coming in and uh, having an aerial assault, You'd have been in big trouble not having the support of these Ungor Raiders. Just something to make Lua not want to be sitting there charging at you, right? You, you need to have something to fire back at him. So I think that that is a good call to have the Ungor Raiders. But again, the worry here is that you have very little by way of infantry chaff in this army. And if it falls apart too quickly, you're going to find a lot of your specialized units um, potentially getting outnumbered. So I feel like this Beastman army definitely does have some weaknesses. But, in this case, you saw it used well here. Um, the, uh, the, the Bretonians really couldn't threaten even the crappy Ungor raiders, really. And it's because, or sorry, the Ungor spearherds. And it's because their infantry was never going to get to a fight without being jacked up very badly. So remember, the only infantry here they had that could even contend with the Ungor raiders was the foot squires, and there was only two of them. So in this case, it works out very good. Now, their cavalry certainly could have done a lot of damage on the charge. They could have fought the Saigors, but remember, if the cavalry charges in after the Saigors, it then could be getting shot by Ungor raiders, could be getting shot by other units. And so it's kind of this trade-off here for Bretonia in that case, um, and it didn't work out well for him on this one. Be curious to see, what do you all think of Sovereign's Beastman army? Do you have some favorite Beastman armies? I know for me, I kind of like the one, like, so for instance, I had a video up not long ago where I played someone, I think it was from the Han clan during my stream, and he brought a very mobile, very powerful kind of chariot Beastman army. I really liked that one. Um, thought it did a lot of damage. It was very specialized, um, and it worked very good against what I brought. Um, so I think the Beastmen have a lot of interesting builds, despite the fact that they're probably very light on content compared to a lot of factions out there. Yeah, the Beastmen, pretty light on content, very similar to the Wood Elves, who we expect to see some content for, you know, hopefully sometime later this year. Um, and as we see that content from the Wood Elves, I would expect that we're going to see their faction maybe get some gaps filled in the roster that they have. Um, not that they don't have capability again, and same with the Beastmen. It's not that they don't have capability, but I feel like there's some gaps and the Beastmen roster that keep them from being a really spectacular faction, although they are a good faction in certain situations, and in fact, a really good faction in certain situations. So anyway, cool game here from Sovereign. Appreciate him and uh, 
uh, Komeji here for uh, providing us with a fun battle. Uh, like I said, would love to hear your feedback um, for Sovereign's army. Uh, I don't know, with Beastmen, personally, I guess it just kind of depends on who I'm playing, but typically, I do like to go heavy on maneuverability. It's one of my favorite ways to play the Beastmen, is to get a lot of Senegors, Warhound support, and move quick, strike hard, and fast. Like, that's typically my favorite way to play the Beastmen. Like I said, curious to see what you all think. Anyway, appreciate y'all being here. Air of Carthage signing out for now. Hey, if you liked the video, go do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. It's a small thing, but it helps out a lot. And if you want to see more, make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to be notified when we have new videos, you can click the bell up there that YouTube provides. And uh, we will keep you notified of the new content. Anyway, I will see you soon on some more Total War Warhammer 2 action.